um, there uh, may be some of us who still feel that the present sex offender laws that exist um, are designed to protect children, but they've maybe gone a little too far or something like this. But I'll, I can assure you that protecting children is no more the reason for this war on those labeled sex offenders than weapons of mass destruction was the reason we went into Iraq. <laughs> The uh, examples, uh, unfortunately, you have either experienced them or uh, are familiar with them from people calling you, desperate people. Um, I get those calls from around the country uh, constantly. Two days ago, mother from Florida, son 17 years old, has had sex with a 16-year-old girlfriend, plea bargain, got four years in jail. She's pulling her hair out now because she's trying to figure out when he finally gets out, uh, where they're gonna move. Because there's a park down the street from the house that they've owned their whole lives. The house isn't worth anything now with the drop in property values. They're not gonna be able to get anything for it, but they're gonna have to sell it anyway. These stories just keep pouring in. Last, yesterday, a woman from Washington, son, 20 years old, had a sexual relationship with a 15-year-old. Probably not a great situation. The parents turn him in. He's now forced to go through sex offender therapy in which his counselor uh, is telling him that uh, he's incurable. Um, and he's just gotta come to terms with that. And uh, of course he has to pay for this therapy which he has to go through in a low minimum security institution. These are far from the worst stories of, of dads being thrown out of their homes, separated from their kids, of teenage lovers not being able to see each other until they get married <laughs> when they turn the right age. So it is lunacy when a country whose laws, if fully implemented, would make sex offenders of most Americans. It is lunacy when the... Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> it, would, it is lunacy when the good old boy legis state legislators uh, pass laws about registry and residency restrictions and lifetime civil commitment for behaviors uh, that most of them engaged in when they were younger or older <laughs> and that many of their kids are engaging in right now. Uh, and it is lunacy when the very zealots who insist on uh, increasing the persecution of those uh, who engaged in certain things, things that uh, that they did themselves when they were, were younger. Uh, a relative of mine, I get along very well with her, when all we talk about is stuff that is going wrong in the country, anti-war stuff and all that. Uh, but when she found out I was working with this project, I started screaming and yelling of how could you get involved in such a despicable and I know she, she was involved in underage sex. <laughs> to tell her that she is a sex offender or that her lovers when she was a teenager are sex offenders, would you, she wouldn't be able to comprehend it. Hatred, stupidity, hypocrisy, uh, and all the suffering that comes with them. These are all accepted as a logical way to protect children. This, of course, is the bad news. The good news is that you are all here, ready for a fight. What are we about? 
we all have big differences with each other, but there are some things that we're about in common. On one level, we're about changing laws that violate the rights of those people you love. Trying to stop new laws like the Adam Walsh Act that makes things worse and trying to at least get some minor concessions <laughs> through legislatures that might help a few people. And those are critical. And they're the core of a lot of what these wonderful groups across this, the country are working on. But I'm asking you to see what we're doing in a much bigger perspective. I want you to see this as a battle for the soul of our country. Because a country that follows self-destructive policies and continues down that course has no future. This is the core hysteria going on in our society today. And that's why it is so difficult to work on. Because so many of the policies we follow are based on this type of hysteria. I want to say it straight out. Most commentators in the media, especially Fox News, but all of them, National Public Radio, you name it, but Fox really gets on this. From right to left on the political spectrum are a dangerous bunch. They're no different whatsoever from the witch hunters that we know about in Massachusetts in a town called Salem, 30 miles from where I live. A town which decided in the 1600s to destroy itself in the name of protecting its children from witches. The feelings and attitudes and belief systems that those in charge of that society, these weren't crazy people doing this. These were the officials. These were the judges. These were the religious leaders who were in charge of rounding up people in Salem and murdering them to save the children. If you haven't seen the film, The Crucible, it's based on Arthur Miller's play, been around for quite a while now. If you watch that, you will pick up exactly the same set of feelings that are, that are on the loose in this situation that we're dealing with. These people today who do the same as the witch hunters in Salem, fortunately not yet murdering people, leaving that to, to people who find others on the registry and decide they have to be eliminated, like the women from Maine who called me, whose son was murdered because as a teenager he had sex with his girlfriend and he was on the registry as a, what do they call it, sexual assault, whatever it's called. He's dead. Did you hear about here in St. Louis this morning? There was a gentleman who was man with a hammer and was in critical condition. And the reason that he did it is he said he was offending, sexually offending some young girls. Mm -hmm. it turns out that's not what he was doing, but this guy is in a coma now. Yeah. There's nothing more dangerous than a crusader who is out to rid the world of evil and who gets huge amounts of social reinforcement from our leaders for doing it. These people in our media, in our state houses, are leading our country into a place of craziness and hatred and they must be stopped by people who still have the capacity for common sense we must protect the country's children from the likes of these people. <clears throat> Our goal as human beings is to reduce and eventually to stop the trauma of sexual violation of children and of everyone. But our goal is not to escalate vindictiveness throughout our society by making us one mean place to live and raise kids. 
Our goal is to reduce sexual violence and harm throughout our society, not to fill our jails with men and some women, both the guilty and the innocent. Our goal is to empower children to say no to those who would harm them and yes to those who want their happiness and not to turn our children into paranoid cripples, afraid to walk to school or ride their bike or play in their own front yards, viewing the world primarily as a fearful place out to get them. What we're dealing with here is something that affects far more than the people directly affected by these laws. It's much bigger than that. As more and more men especially, who pose no danger at all to kids, stay away from them. Refuse them rides and shun inter innocent interactions that involve physical contact to avoid any possible misinterpretation of genuine affection. Children and men in our society are the losers. I went to a uh, museum that used to be an old firehouse. And this is an example that, while very insignificant, and in other ways says an awful lot, Anyway, the kids, they, they had some type of party there for kids, five, six-year-old boys and girls. Because it was an old firehouse, there was still the fire pole going from the top floor down to the bottom, and naturally all the kids wanted to go down the pole. <laughs> and uh, the boys went down, and then it was, the girls down, went down. They were ready, ready to go down, but they couldn't let the girls go down because none of the fathers there were willing to catch the little girls when they came down to the f ground floor. How many uh, men today, they see a toddler running to an intersection with traffic, will run up and grab that kid? How many of us out on a lonesome road with a 14-year-old boy thumbing trying to get home would dare to pick him up? Most of us still would. But the fact that this absolutely normal behavior, essential behavior for a sane society, takes an act of courage and leads to anxiety is a very, very dangerous sign for all of us. We must continually point toward the kind of world we want for children and those who love them, and then work for it against those who want to turn the world into a gated community, populated by families living constantly in fear of phantoms, constantly instilling fear and loathing in their own children. Those girls whose parents reported their boyfriend leading to jail, conviction, jailing, and all that. These relationships with their parents are finished. These parents have shamed their girls, in some cases dragging them before courts, saying what they did. <laughs> and of course, throughout history, young people have never had sex with each other. This is, this is, this is brand new. <laughs> there are two sides of our history. On one side, you have people who thrive on fear and scaring us into doing things that harm ourselves and hurt our country. On the other side, there are those who insist that reason and common sense and community must prevail against all these forms of fear. 
Paranoia is a dangerous way to deal with difficult problems. And this is a difficult problem. Not the only one, though. You would think the only thing wrong for kids today was that they were in danger of being abused sexually. Not that they're living in cars. Not that their, their families are living on $11,000 a year. Not that they're ashamed of where they come from. Just this. Our job is to bring truth and rationality and compassion to address our very real problems. And this is one of them. For all our differences, that's what we must do together. For the stakes are very big, not just for those on the registry, or those rotting in hell holes today <coughs> called lifetime civil commitment and called treatment centers. The uh, lawyer, one lawyer assigned in Missouri, it was a couple of years now, called me to bring up the cases of people in treatment centers. This is after you've served your full sentence, right? They decide you're too dangerous to go out. And some people are dangerous, but most of these people are not. But that, that's another issue, to, obviously a difficult one to deal with. She was from Missouri. I don't know if she's here. Um, and she said, uh, can you give me any information or help me with my job? <laughs> because here in Missouri, with all the people I re represent, the only way anyone ever gets out of a treatment center is dead. Not one person, and this is again two years ago. You're supposed to be reviewed regularly. And of course, many, while there are many good people that work in these treatment centers, many are abusive ones too. We get calls constantly from these people, desperate. Will someone please help me? I am suffocating here and I cannot even get my case heard. So, welcome. <laughs> Got a big job, I think, and let's begin.